Ian Williams, yeah. uh, welcome to the studio. Thanks, Sarah. You're the Forage and Farm System Specialist for Pioneer, and uh, today we're going to talk about the benefits of maize silage, but tell me a little bit more about the history of Yates over two centuries. It's yeah. very interesting. They were, well, they actually started in England, and then they moved to Australia, and then I think there's been about three or four generations now that have been in New Zealand. And everyone had Yates, you know, flowers or Yates Gardens. Got, that was Philip Yates, uh, Yates Corporation. Mm -hmm. And then um, they uh, got corporate raided by Equity Corp, which was um, you know a bit of a rascally chap who did that mm -hmm. and then he lost everything and started up again started up genetic technologies which is the company i worked for 40 years ago um in the basement of his of his house with one pallet of seed and that's so it's a great so the so the yates family passionate about maize and they've kind of installed it in us yeah and the maize as different varieties have spread wide haven't they i mean in the old days it was kind of like it was growing in the waikato and bay of Pendy and not much else but now we grow it from uh tyree mm -hmm. down south right through to northland so a, you know, a big, big ge geographical spread. Yeah. yeah, different different cultivars for different places of the country. And I can remember my time in the Waikato. Uh, I think it, by Christmas the maize was meant to be up to top wire of the conventional fence. Is yeah. that about right? Oh yeah, and we yeah, but we do that easily now. Mm. Um, we actually there's a, there's some varieties that'll be flowering just after Christmas on the longest day. Some of the grain varieties. Mm. So I mean, it's, it's interesting. Eh? Some of them have been developed in places like um, Siberia and um, all those sort of. Mm. Yeah. Okay. For those those that haven't grown maize, I suppose we should have a look at the process. You know, if you're growing maize for this coming season, this coming spring, you should be well and truly into preparation. Yeah, although it's interesting with the seed treatments mm. that we've got now, um, we can actually turn a paddock over and get it into, into a crop pretty quickly. Like we used to talk about three weeks, three weeks to a month. Um, I mean, you should have done things like, for example, highlighted the paddocks that you're mm. going to plant and, and um, uh, did your soil tests and all that sort of stuff. Mm. But when it comes to actually taking a paddock out of, may, out of grass and putting it into maize, that's actually quite a quick process in some places. And as I say, I, I know guys that'll do it in three to four days. First of all, do your soil tests, identify the paddock, yep. make sure their soils are up to growing yes. because maize is a reasonably gross feeder, isn't it? Yeah, it is, it, 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 and it doesn't like wet feet. So if you've got you know really swampy parts of the paddock, for example, you may not want to plant those. Uh, and then and, it, and for every ton of dry matter that a maize silage crop takes off, it takes off 12 kilograms of nitrogen. So a 20 ton maize crop is going to take off around about half a ton of urea mm. worth of nitrogen. Wow! So it's a lot of you know it's a lot of fertility and, and potash is the other one. Yep. Big big need for potash. And that's the reason a lot of uh, dairy farms use their paddocks that they have spread the effluent in. Yeah, uh, that's a great way of using it up, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. Look, I tell you, we did a trial with um, plant and food one year. There was plant and food ourselves, Foundation for Arable Research, and Waikato Regional Council just looking at whether you could use an effluent paddock to grow maize. And we had no response to fertiliser whatsoever out of effluent paddocks, simply because it just sucked up all that potash and nitrogen that was sitting in the paddock. Uh, and and the, on one farm, we got no response for two years. That's how good it was at, at scavenging the maize out. And in fact, actually, some of the regional councils are talking now about it being one of the mitigations that farmers can use to reduce their nitrate leaching. That's important as we look into the future with nutrient management, etc. Every farmer, of, as I say, over five hectares has to do it. Yeah. So it's a great crop. Now, before Sarah jumps in with a question, the other one I was going to say is the cut even. I know on dry land, dry land down in Canterbury, it's yep. fairly difficult when we get a decent dry summer. Yes. But Maize loves its moisture to keep going. Yes. What's the sort of cut-off yield you have to be considering uh, to make it worthwhile? Really you think? good question. So, so I grow maize at home. We got a fa. We got you know we got a, we got seventy acres, and we grow maize in summer and finish lambs in winter. And the other day, I actually ran those numbers um, without any land cost. My break, I, I grow eighteen ton. That's that's about my yield. I it's about thirteen cents a kilogram of dry matter mm. as my as my, oh, sorry thirteen ton as my mm. as my cutoff mm. in terms of break even. If I put my land cost in, so the cost of lease, it comes up to about 18 tonne. So for me, break even is around about 17 to 18 tonne, depending on the year and depending on what I get paid for that, that stuff. What mm. is the cost of cents per um, kilo of dry matter work out roughly to be? Yeah, in comparison so, to other types of feed. So if, you, if you're growing it on farm, say on an effluent paddock, you're down at around about 11, 12 cents a kilogram of dry matter. If you're growing it on land that you're going to, say you lease land, in my situation, 18 cents a kilogram of dry matter is, is, what, you can, is what your growing costs are. Uh, and then, of course, it depends on what uh, you're going to either sell it for mm. or use it for. 
So grass silage down in Canterbury, Richard, what would it be? Well, this last season it was ridiculous. Oh, so it's because we were giving it away. Yeah, the, yeah they're understocked and yeah, yeah. Uh, giving it away. But you get a, a pinch season where everyone wants everything all yes. of a sudden. Yes. It's quite interesting. We were talking about this earlier. I said, you know, good pea vinings were cheaper. Yeah. Than grass seed straw. Yeah, amazing. Because eh? one was before Christmas, one was after. Yeah. And I, I suppose when you look at that, but you know, the mid teens is normally where it sits. Yeah, that and, 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 and you know, you look at your wintering costs, if you're gonna say say use it to winter cattle, I mean wintering costs are about twenty five cents mm. a kilogram, thirty cents a kilogram of dry matter, depending on, on what you've got. Mm. Um so yeah, I mean it is a it is a cheap feed. Mm. What about so cheap feed but in terms of nutrients? What are some, some of the benefits of maize, and in particular beef versus dairy as well? Where it's used most effectively, the, say in the dairy situation, it's used most effectively to stock your farm so that you harvest as much pasture as possible. Basically, it's a, it, it, you know, so, so filling feed gaps and that sort of stuff. Particularly on dry land where you've got big lifts and you know, drops in, in, in feed supply, having something like maize silage just to drop into a, a feed gap and, and milk cows through is really profitable. Um, with beef, it's, it's, it's exactly the same. We did some work with re, uh, ag research, and what we found was the ability to carry animals to harvest pasture was the most effective form of, of maize mm-hmm. silage. We looked, we compared finishing using maize silage to finish animals as opposed to using maize silage to carry um, the right number of animals to harvest the pasture. Mm-hmm. That was the most profitable. I mean, finishing animals are still very profitable, but that was more profitable. Radio Live Rural Exchange. Mm-hmm.